just feel the presence of the Lord so, so, so purely. He cometh to Bethsaida and bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. He looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. He was restored and saw every man clearly. He sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. Isn't it interesting that Jesus knew he did not live in that town without even asking? I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, your miracle is already in motion. Your miracle is already in motion. Would you turn to somebody and speak those words to them? Your miracle is already in motion. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do in this place. Thank you for what you did this morning. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. Have your way today. Release the gift of faith in every situation, in every trial, in every pew right now, God. You know what everyone's going through. We give you all the praise and the glory for what you're about to do in this place, in Jesus' name. If you love him, can you clap your hands to him one more time? Don't you? He's so amazing. Praise God. You may be seated. The most amazing thing to me about faith is that faith transforms into whatever you need it to be in the situation that you are in. It's a gift of the Spirit. It is a fruit of the Spirit. It is also a shield of faith in the Bible when it talks about the armor of God. So basically, and there's, all other, there's a lot of other places where faith is mentioned being a different type of weapon, but basically faith is whatever you need it to be in the moment that you're in. So if the enemy is shooting at you and attacking you, faith becomes a shield to stop the attacks of the enemy. If you are trying to help someone, faith becomes a gift that you use to bless them. If, if you're going through something yourself and God is taking you through a trial, faith is the fruit that grows inside of you during that crisis. Faith is amazing. That's why Satan wants your faith more than anything in this world. That's what happened with Peter when right after he had just entered into Judas, Satan asked for Peter in the exact same chapter. Hell is never satisfied. He has just taken over one disciple. Now he's asking for another one. And Jesus said, Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith fail not because Jesus knew if the devil's after you, there's only one thing he's after and that is your faith because if he gets your faith, he takes away your future. There's nothing you can do in the kingdom without faith for without faith it's impossible to please God and so you understand that anything Romans said that is not done in faith is sin whatsoever is not a faith is sin so faith is essential when it comes to the kingdom of God the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God the Bible also says we walk by faith and not by sight so if faith comes by hearing the word and then if you walk by faith and not by sight it's connected to vision in the spirit what you hear determines how you see and so if you hear the word of God you will see things differently because faith that comes through the word transforms how you see your situation if you're never positive about anything you're going through you need more Bible inside of you because if the word gets in you it transforms your vision of what you're going through it may not fix what you're going through but it helps you get what you're what you're going through because of faith so faith in its simplest form is is spiritual vision it's seeing what you cannot see with your natural eye faith is seeing things that your natural flesh cannot 
expect to happen. That's faith. It's seeing something in the spirit. And so every morning when you and I wake up, we either walk in the flesh or we walk in the spirit. We either see things uh, our way and react our way or we see things in the spirit, the way God sees them. Let me give you an example of, of two people that saw it differently. Same situation. There's been no rain for three and a half years. Elijah tells his servant, go and look to the sea and see if there's any sign of rain. And so he goes to the mountaintop, looks up, and there's nothing, comes back down and said, there is nothing. And so Elijah said, go again. In fact, go seven times. And so dude climbs the mountain seven different times. I've been worn out by the first time. Seven times time he climbs the mountain comes back down the seventh time and said there's a cloud like a man's hand uh, and Elijah said okay there's a sound of abundance of rain here's what's powerful Elijah never told him look to the sky he said look to the sea but the servant was walking in the flesh and so flesh has to have something as proof, as evidence before it celebrates. When you walk in the flesh, you have to have evidence before you worship. You have to have some kind of positive report before you give God praise. That's walking in the flesh. The servant kept looking up at the sky and there was no sign of rain. But Elijah said, look to the sea. Why? Because when sun rays hit the sea, the evaporation of the water goes back up into the sky, forming clouds and drops rain on the ground. In other words, the source of the rain was the sea, not the cloud. And Elijah said, if long, as long as there's a source, I expect a miracle. I expect to get through this situation. As long as God is still alive, we will get through this. As long as God is still on the throne, we will come out of this because there is a sound of the abundance of rain. My source is still alive. So spiritual vision is seeing what flesh can't see. So what are you saying? So flesh celebrates the manifestation of the miracle, the proof. Spirit celebrates the motion of it, the beginning of it. We react after God does it. Heaven celebrates before it happens. Let me give you proof. We get excited, and we should, when someone gets baptized, when they get the Holy Ghost. We rejoice. We have excitement among us because this is a new baby in the Lord. Angels rejoice when the sinner repents. We go crazy when we have the evidence that they've prayed through. But when heaven sees them repenting, they start the party before we ever get to because they know it's just a matter of time when repentance leads to salvation and there is an answer that we'll see. So we celebrate after we see it. It's like the Israelites. 430 years in bondage, 10 plagues, get all the spoils of Egypt, head to the Red Sea. They see Pharaoh chase them. They're mad. They're complaining. Get through the Red Sea. God opens it up. That's a pretty big deal. Closes it up on the enemy. And then they get their tambourine out. We better start shouting because God did. Yeah, well, God was doing the. But, and so they go crazy after it's all done. But. Way before that even started, God met Moses on the backside of a mountain and said, I am come down to, not I will come down, I am come down to deliver them. Right now, I'm delivering them. They're not going to thank me until they get the evidence, but I just want you to know I'm already moving before they thank me. Do you realize God's already doing something for you right now and you don't even know about it? Why don't you just praise him for what you cannot see and then you can thank him for what you do 
And I'm going to go one step further. I feel the Holy Ghost. He said to tell some of you, if you knew what I was doing, you wouldn't even patty cake me. You'd run the aisles because if you knew what I was up to, you'd understand. Wow. He's worthy of pre-miracle praise. He's worthy of the praise before I see the pr- Yes, why can I not praise him without evidence? Because I'm walking by sight. Once he does it, oh, we're going to shout. We see our family member come to the Lord. We've been praying for years. We see him come, and we're, we're, they're at church, and we're going, oh, God, I hope they go to the altar. I hope we don't have one of those weird services. Where Sister Cray Cray does her thing. She's sitting right in front of us. Sorry if she's sitting right in front of you. I don't know who she is. I'm just making it up. You know. Anyway. And you're going, oh God, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And then I hope the preacher, I hope he preaches to my family member. I hope, boy, I hope he prayed. I hope he brings it to her. And then, okay, yeah, okay, and I hope they go to the altar. And they go to the altar and they start praying. Oh, I hope God touches them. And when we see them break through, we go, yeah. Thank you, Lord. But three days before that, when they were driving in their car, saying, I need to get back to God. I need to get back to that church. And they made the phone call to you. We were just hoping because we walk in the flesh. But the Spirit said you should have been celebrating when they made the call to you because that was your signal that the miracle was already. We praise Him after He provides. After we see the miracle of the fish and loaves feed 5,000, then we praise him. But mom made that lunch that morning when nobody was around. And that miracle was in motion when nobody knew about. Did you know God's doing stuff for you right now that you have no idea about? That everybody in this church has no clue about. But God is working it and you can't. Let me move quickly. So, so the reason I'm saying all that is because this guy needs a miracle. He's blind. He doesn't live in Bethsaida. They brought him there. Uh, Bethsaida is where Peter's from, where Andrew's from, where John is from, Philip's from. Jesus is coming from one direction into Bethsaida. They bring the blind man from another direction into Bethsaida for this divine encounter, this divine moment. Jesus is only coming here for this dude. And so he's, he's coming toward Bethsaida. They bring the blind man. Jesus is coming. Anything can happen. So they bring him to Jesus. You would think that he would just heal him right on the spot. They had faith. They brought him. But instead, the first thing he does to set the miracle in motion, he severs the guy from his friends and says, you're about to go on a lonely walk with me for a while. Now, how in the world is this my miracle in motion when things start going bad? We are taught that when God gives us favor, when God opens doors, when God gives us proof, that stuff is in motion. But in the spirit, the signal your miracle is in motion is after he gives you a glimpse of it, all hell breaks loose. And when it's, it's like he gives the demons the keys to the car and lets them drive you to your destiny. Joseph's dream was going nowhere as long as he lived at home with the coat of many colors. But the second they threw him in the pit, he was officially on hell's radar. And his destiny was now in alignment with what his dream said. Because when you get a miracle in motion, things start breaking down. Things start falling apart. Pain comes. I told them this morning when when you talk about an awesome moment, you're in your you're in your house and Gabriel comes in your room. Hello, I'm Gabriel. I don't know if you talk like that. I'm Batman, whatever. Hello, I'm Batman. Hello, I'm Gabriel. 
Gabriel. Mary, you're going to have a baby. The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. No one's ever had this in the history of the world. The Savior of the world's in your womb. Wow. I'm on my way. Miracles in motion, right? Oh, by the way, as soon as I leave, your boyfriend is going to want to dump you. Because he's not going to believe you and no one else is going to believe you. And when you have the baby, I um, hope you don't mind birthing him in a barn. And all the other moms, their babies are going to die because your baby gets to live. Because the king is going to kill all the babies because your baby's alive. Because he's looking to kill your baby. And he's looking to kill it so, so he's looking so in, in, uh, so ferociously to come after your son that, that you're going to have to leave town and leave the country and move to a different nation you've never been in and live in, in, around people you don't know and be a stranger in a foreign land and sit there until I tell you the king is dead. Now, I'm going to come back and tell you, just trust me, I'm going to come back and tell you the king is dead. Until I do, you stay there in a foreign land raising your son and when he's 12, you'll lose him in a crowd of thousands of people, and you'll almost lose your mind because you can't find him. And when, when he's 33, he will be executed publicly naked in front of you. Still want the miracle? But if you go through all that, you'll go to an upper room. And suddenly... There will be a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it will fill all the room. And the one that you're carrying now, you'll carry again because he's going to come inside of you, and you'll never lose him because you're officially on the road to your miracle. It's in motion right now. You don't have any idea. You think it's just all pain, but there's something you're going toward that's amazing. So he says, I want you to walk with him. So he, he's, he's talking. He's taking him on a walk. And sometimes you've got to walk with God before you get an answer. And he's, he's walking with God. And, 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 and all of a sudden, he, he, he's sitting there. And, and Jesus just spits in his face. I don't know if Jesus gave him a heads up. Hey, dude, I'm just going to uh, spit in your face real quick. Uh huh? What? Jesus is like... How's things going? Oh, it's been going okay. You know, I heard about you. I just wanted to heal you. I wanted to get healed, and it's been a wild situation. I've been through so much. Oh, it's amazing. Wow. Well, I'm here for, hey, I'm just going to spit in your face real quick. Huh? Then you, like, hear footsteps, like, where is he? Is he getting in front of me? He, what's he doing? Like, I can't see, but I'm about to blink anyway. And he just spits in his face. Now, I know that I should never question the Lord, but I, I read that and I go, isn't he already going through enough? <laughs> Cannot even see. I know I shouldn't ask the Lord that because I don't want him to. But it's just like, wow, Lord, he's already blind. And then Jesus says, what do you see? Well, first let me wipe Um, I, I see men as trees walking. This tells me that he has seen before. Because right. right. how does he know what trees look like? Right. He has seen trees. But the problem is because we walk by flesh and not spirit. When God's doing a new thing, we want to connect the dots when the blessing is blurry. And because we can't see what he's doing, we revert to the past. All right. What he's doing now reminds me of what I used to see. I just told them this morning, if you're expecting a post, or if you're expecting a pre-COVID revival, post-COVID, you've got God in the box. Because God is going to do a brand new thing. And if you force him to do it the way he used to do it, it will be blurry to you. And you'll wonder why he's not doing it like he used to do it. But he's not going to stop doing it. He's just going to do a, use a new pattern. But we cannot put him in a box. Well, I, I think it's going to be like that. 
The reason we do that is flesh cannot see in the future. Flesh can only see in the past. So flesh looks backwards when God's trying to move us forward. And flesh says, I know you're doing something. I pick up on some motion, but it reminds me of things I used to see. See, that's what got Mary. When she went to the tomb of Jesus, she said, who will roll away the stone? The reason she said that was because when her brother had died, Jesus came to his graveyard and said, who will roll away the stone? Roll away the stone. So Mary assumed, if I'm going to see Jesus, I have to do what I did before to have something happen now. But when she got there, the stone had already been rolled away. And God said to tell you that what you had to do last time, you will not have to do anymore. You will not have to do it this time because I'm already removing obstacles to your breakthrough that you have no idea of being moved. Somebody shout my miracles in motion. You, 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 you kind of fixed it, but it's still blurry. You ready? Jesus knew he would touch him the first time and it would be blurry. He's God. He knew the man would say, I see ministries. Ready? Jesus, this is so cool. Jesus Wanted to make sure the man could still hear his voice. Faith cometh by. And hearing by the. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. The word is talking. I'm, I know I'm working it out. And you're so focused on the past. But can you still hear my voice? While you're trying to connect the dots. Will you keep the prayer meeting going when it's still dark? When it's still foggy? When the details aren't aligned yet and you don't have the proof? Will you still keep the prayer going? He said, I see men as trees. And when you see men as trees, you are magnifying men. Trees are bigger than men usually. So when you magnify men... As trees, you're saying, I, 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 I see men bigger than what they are. I told them this morning, this is going to get me shot, but I'm going to say it. You, um, never fall in love with a guest preacher more than your pastor. Because here's why. We've got too many people praising superstar preachers like they're the only thing that God uses. You've got the same Holy Ghost every preacher on the planet does. Oh, I know, it's, I know I'm not going to get popular with it, but I'm just being real. You've got the same power, but that man's going to stand before God for your soul one day. So thank God for your, you can love any guest preacher. Love me all you want, but love him more. That's the man that's answering to God for your soul. Don't magnify ministry. <laughs> I shouldn't tell the story, but I'm going to tell. I may have told it before. I walked into, I preached a, a service on a Wednesday night, went back on a Sunday morning, and walked in the lobby. Pastor greeted me at the little small, little, little tiny church. Walked in the lobby, and this lady, I could tell she was full of the devil. I walked in, and she said, oh, good, I got you both here at the same time, talking about her pastor and me. She said, talking to me, would you please teach our pastor how to preach? I looked at him. I said, can I say what I want to say? He said, go for it, please. I said, I hope God don't come back today, lady, because you're going straight to hell. She said, what? I said, you heard me. I said, let me just tell you something. I could care less about you. I don't even know you. I said, but that guy that you just mocked? is going to stand before God on judgment day for your soul. 
So you might want to rethink your request about a preaching sermon when the guy standing beside you will stand before God one day. He tears rolled. He said, thank you. I said, sorry, but we need to put it in perspective. This is the angel of the city. This is the man God sent you. Be thankful and be, you have the greatest pastor you could possibly have. It's impossible to get better than this. I'm off my notes, but I'm in the Holy Ghost. I feel it. I know you love them. I, this is awesome. And they're well deserving of it. Sorry, I'll get back to my stuff. So Jesus touched him a second time. Watch. First touch came with a question. What do you see? Second touch came with a command. Look up. Don't go back to that town. Wait a second. There is a touch coming that will give you so much clarity. It will bring such divine direction. It's not just a touch to strengthen you and to heal you. It's also going to strengthen you and pull you out of what you were thinking of going back to. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Someone, this was not part of the morning service, but somebody in here, you're being pulled by a source in the world, and you're considering going back to it, and the Lord said to tell you, I am going to touch you a second time, but I've got a command with that touch. Don't you go back to what you came out of, because I've got something in your future that's greater than your past. And for everybody else in here that needs divine direction, why don't you throw your hands in the air? Because God said, I will touch you again, and I will bring clarity. I will bring discernment. I will bring vision. And he opened his eyes. And he saw, you can stay standing. He saw every man clearly. Oh my goodness. The miracle was in motion the whole time. When he was alone, when he was getting spit on, when it was blurry, when he was questioning, when he was looking back at his past, when he was magnifying the wrong people, God was staying with him. The whole time. I wish somebody could see what I see right now. I wish you could see what the Lord's trying to show you. I've been here the entire time when you couldn't see your way out. And I've been here the whole time. And I came just to talk to you. Jesus didn't come to that town for anybody else. He came with one directive. To find the guy that could not see his way out. Find the guy that didn't have direction. Find the guy that didn't know what to do. Cause him to walk with you. Cause him to talk to you. And then cause him to see things he's never seen. By the authority of the word of God, the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release the gift of faith in this room right now onto every pew, into every situation. There's so many different things going on, I'm sure, in this room. There's so many different situations and battles and struggles. And some are physical, some are emotional, some are family, some are grieving, some are hurting in, in all kinds of ways, some are financial. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus that faith would just drench you, that the gift the faith would come upon you like a blanket, like a cloak, and would surround you. And when you want to voice your doubt, you can't because faith is making you believe and it doesn't make sense, but you're holding on. I release that upon you right now. I release vision, kasha, and virtue in this room in the name of Jesus to every situation that is blurry. Let there be clarity to every situation where there are no details. Let there be divine answers. In the name of Jesus Christ, release it in this room right now. Would you throw your hands up and would you begin to worship the Lord? And would you begin to pray in the spirit?
I'll tell you in the Holy Ghost what I see. God, God, there are gifts in this room right now. And the one gift I'm really feeling is the gift of discernment is hovering in this room. Discerning of spirits. We call it discernment. It's really discerning of spirits, the Bible calls it. You're going to see what's really behind what you're talking to. God's going to give you sensitivity in the spirit to know what's really going on. I remember a guy that walked into the service one time in Jacksonville, Florida. I, I remember, like, like it was yesterday, Sunday night, earrings in both ears, walked to the front. A Hispanic guy walked to the front, sat down, sat in front of where they had the... Um, the deaf ministry going on and the lady was giving sign language he was deaf and she was giving sign language to him and 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 so we had a great service and went down to pray for him. everyone was praying for him went down and prayed god open his ears open his ears that he might see or might might hear open his ears might hear and so I'm, and he's he's got his eyes closed and he's praying i said god open his ears he might hear and he's and i'm praying praying nothing happened i prayed over and over and i mean nothing put my fingers in his ears nothing I tried everything. Finally, I just said, God, I, I, I guess it's not your will. He said, it's not physical, it's a spirit. Because I said to one person in the Bible, come out thou dumb and deaf spirit. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's spiritual. He said, you're trying to pray for healing when there needs to be deliverance. And I just looked at him. His eyes are closed. He can't hear me. I said, spirit of deafness, come out. As soon as I said that, he instantly, I'm not trying to gross you out, he began to like vomit in his hands and dry heave. Someone told me they counted 500 times he did this in 30 minutes. I mean, it was like we were almost going to call the paramedics. He was just, something was wrong. And when he got done, he knelt on his knees. I'll never forget it. And then he signed something to the lady. And I said, what did he just say? And she said, he said, the screaming and the torment is gone. And I said, then Lord open his ears. And instantly he began to scream. I can hear. I can hear. The first touch. It was, it was blurry. We were on the right track. But God can show up with divine and when discerning of spirits hit, he was delivered. I pray God releases that right now in this room. So you know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it, how to say it, who to say it to, how to text it, what to say. Ah, shut up. I pray God orders your facial expressions, your responses, your tones, your words. I pray a release of discerning of spirits upon you so you're not walking around blind, getting hit left and right, having to react to every bit of chaos that's coming at you. But I pray God would give you clarity so you will see before it comes.